The A-Team, for many 80s kids, has to be high on the list for favorite television shows. This larger-than-life series followed the exploits of soldiers of fortune, named Hannibal, Faceman, B.A. Baracus, and Murdoch, as they were on the run for a crime they didn't commit, helping those in need along the way. The show originally aired on NBC from 1983 to 1987. It was created by writers Stephen Canal and Frank Lupo, who were hired to create a new show as a vehicle for a new star named Mr. T. The A-Team was basically a primetime live-action cartoon. All of the wacky aliases and codenames hinted at the superhero appeal of the show, which was a stunt-filled extravaganza for viewers. The show was typical 1980s, and it started with the opening voiceover. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the A-Team. It set the tone perfectly for an exciting mix of action and macho fellowship. So let's take a look back at this hit show and learn some behind-the-scenes trivia about the production and the people that brought the A-Team to life. The name A-Team is actually used in military terminology. Military attacks are often executed by an assembled alpha team, otherwise known as A-Team. The A-Team advances first and then is often supported by a Bravo team, or B team. Alpha team also refers to a small special forces unit, which was more likely the designation on this show. The A team was the subject of both widespread controversy and ridicule over its portrayal of violence. It was controversial for its heavy use of gun violence in a show that was aimed mainly at families, but also ridiculed for how unrealistic that violence was. Considering this was an action-type military show, it's strange that there was only one on-screen death during the entire run. Every episode climaxed with explosions and gunfire, and bad guys flying every which way, but no one ever actually got hurt. Crooks were often shown scrambling out of cars before they blew up, or running away after being thrown from a window. The only on-screen death came in Season 4, in the episode titled, The Sound of Thunder with the death of General Fulbright, played by actor Jack Ging. Fulbright had been a recurring character in the A-Team, appearing in eight episodes dating back to the first season, and was killed fighting side-by-side with the A-Team. The stars of the show absolutely were the real reason the show was so successful, and now memorable, with George Pappard playing Hannibal Smith, Mr. T playing B.A. Baracus, and Dwight Schultz playing Howling Mad Murdoch. When they shot the pilot episode, the role of Face Man was actually played by another actor named Tim Dunnigan. It was decided fairly quickly that Dunnigan looked too young to be playing a Vietnam veteran, so Dirk Benedict was hired to replace him. Before Dirk Benedict became Face Man, he was Lieutenant Starbuck on the original Battlestar Galactica, so it's fitting that there's a Battlestar Galactica joke in the opening credits of the A-Team. As the credits introduce the actors, a perplexed face man watches a metallic Cylon warrior stroll by. This bad guy was Benedict's nemesis in the earlier series. As the wild and unpredictable Murdoch, Dwight Schultz provided the A-Team with comic relief. But Murdoch also remained one of the most mysterious A-Team characters, because we never learn his first name. We're told that Hannibal's real first name is John. Face man's real name is Templeton Peck and B.A. stands for Bosco Albert. When it comes to Murdoch, all we know is that his initials are H.M., hence the Howling Mad nickname. Perhaps the most frequently overlooked cast member in the A-Team was Melinda Kalia, who appeared as a series regular in the first season and second season. Kalia played a feisty journalist who investigated the A-Team's exploits, but became an ally to the group. But the consensus seems to be that there was bad blood between her and Papard from the beginning. It is also said that Kalia expressed frustration with her role on the show and was pushing to be a more integral part of the action. Kalia claimed the animosity spread, and by the second season, the entire cast pushed to get the producers to replace her. After she was fired, she was briefly replaced by Marla Heasley as Tanya, another reporter character. It seems that Melinda Kalia wasn't the only co-star that the A-Team's top billed star, George Papard, had a problem with. When the A-Team first took to the airwaves, Papard was by far the biggest star in the ensemble. 
However, Papard was angered by the popularity of Mr. T, who quickly became the most prominent figure in the show, and wound up commanding a higher salary than Papard, which only further enraged the more seasoned actor. According to Dirk Benedict, George Papard refused to talk to Mr. T, and would use Benedict as a messenger between them. At one point, Mr. T was almost fired. During filming for the premiere of the fourth season, which took place on a cruise ship, Mr. T was having a really bad day, and to add insult to injury, his air conditioner in his room was not working properly. Even though B.A. fears flying, Mr. T evidently did not, as he called for a helicopter to pick him up and bring him back to land. He then called a producer with a list of demands so he could return. This almost led them to fire him, but they ended up working things out and the show went on. As hard as it might be to imagine now, by the end of the series run, the A-Team was not considered a major priority by its network NBC. It had been massively popular at first, ranking as one of the top 10 most watched shows in the U.S. for its first three seasons. However, there was a significant drop-off in its fourth and fifth seasons, and by the series finale, it seemed like everyone had lost interest. The intended series finale, which was titled The Gray Team, for some reason was aired as the second to last episode. Subsequently, the very last episode to air in the show's initial run was called Without Reservations, which was the first of two episodes for which the Gray Team should have provided the conclusion. The A-Team van was another important part of the show, and for fans it has become an enduring pop culture icon. In the show it belonged to master mechanic B.A. Baracus, and it was their official mode of transportation. The van went through numerous accidents, gun battles, insane jumps, and was stripped apart and abused in just about every possible way, only to be put back together by B.A. The van was a modified 1983 GMC Vandura cargo van. Some people think that the A-Team van is painted all black, but it wasn't. The section above the red stripe is actually a metallic gray, and many of the toy vans that were produced were painted black, which perpetuated this misconception. More than 30 years after its cancellation, the A-Team continues to inspire a devoted fan base, and it seems to be one of the most popular TV shows people most closely associate with the 1980s. The popularity of the show led to a movie version that was released in 2010, starring Liam Neeson and Bradley Cooper. Mr. T has made it clear that he wasn't much of a fan of the movie. There have also been rumors that a reboot television show is in the works, with a team of both men and women, but we will have to stay tuned to see if that is a plan that comes together. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and for more just like this, please consider subscribing, and don't forget to ring the notification bell so that you can be notified when I release a new video. Stay tuned for more episodes, and thank you so much for watching.